Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our virtual Make Room Conference. We are here tonight on our second night, and we have uh, Minister Brandy Smith, who is my sister in the ministry at Second Arnold Baptist Church. How are you doing, ma'am? I'm great. How are you, Minister Perkins? Doing wonderful. I want to thank you uh, for taking the time out to come and to be a part of this conference. Um, we do know that we were scheduled to have this in person. But because of the pandemic and all that's going on in the world, uh, we thank God for technology that we're still able to do something uh, virtually. And so we thank you for the opportunity to come and to share with us. Uh, tonight, uh, we're going to be dealing with making room for God in our mind, body, and soul. Right. And, um, one of the things that I wanted people to understand, uh, the reason for having this conference uh, it was inspired by Jonathan Reynolds, uh, his album and his book called Make Room. And we need to understand how can we make room for God? Everything is going on, but how can we make room for God? So my first question for you uh, mm -hmm. is, is what can we say to someone who wants to live on the fence? Um, is it possible to live for God and still have a sinful behavior? Well, when I think about uh, people living on the fence, I would say that they know who God is, but they have fears, they have doubts. So they're straddling. They're, they're, they're fearful of letting go of that old life that they thought was the best thing ever. But what they need to come into the knowledge of is that life with God is just awesome. Coming on the side with God is, is the greatest thing and that we can ever do. It saves our life. It saves our soul. It saves our mind. So it's, that's the best way to live. But we as the body of Christ have to be very careful when we're dealing with somebody that is straddling the fence mm -hmm. because you don't want to push them on the other side of the fence. Your goal is to pull them over. Now, we do know that the word of God tells us that you can't serve two masters. So straddling is really not an option because either you're going to love one or you're going to hate the other. So we need to make up our minds. Paul tells us to choose you to say whom we're going to serve. So we need to make up our minds what we're going to serve. But again, I got to go back to the Great Commission. I got to go to the Great Commission because that is what God has commissioned us to do, to go out and make disciples. So if we see somebody that's straddling the fence, how are we going to handle them? We have to make sure that we don't push them over, as I said before, but we have to let them know that, yes, you have doubts, but this is the light, and you have to do it without running them off. You got to do it without condemning them, do it without making them feel like they are the worst people in the world because they're still tugging on some parts of the world. We as believers didn't get to where we are overnight. Ah. We all had struggles. We all had issues. And some of us still have things that we're struggling with now. The issues that by the grace of God that we haven't tipped over or went back on the other side. So we have to make sure that we are drawing with loving and kindness. And when we do that, we're not afraid to share our testimony and to let people know that, hey, I've been where you've been. I understand how you feel. I'm still struggling with that. I'm still going through that. I'm still dealing with that. But, but by the grace of God, right. I'm, I'm here and I'm striving because guess what? At the end of the day, we're not perfect. We're not perfect. And we serve a, a, a forgiving, loving God that, that, that hears us, that knows us, and that knows what we're going through. So he, is, he, he gives us compassion. One other thing I... Um, actually thought about is when um, Paul was encouraging Timothy to speak to the church in Thessalonians and he was telling them to uh, strengthen the people and to comfort the people. Not so much as comfort the people as in, woo, 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 oh, you're so sad, but give them encouragement, exhort them, let them know that I too have, I see the struggle, I understand the struggle, 
You don't want to beat anybody up over the head. You don't want to make anybody feel bad. We have so much going on in the world as is now that, that, um, that the enemy is dangling in front of the people's faces, especially our young people. That's making them think that, oh, this life is the great life. Oh, this is the best way to go. So we have to be able to reach them right where they are. We have to be able to meet them at that place of where they at to say, I'm not going to beat you up because you decided to have a drink. I remember a time when I didn't want to put down the bottle or I, I remember a time when I didn't, that I was smoking or I was doing this, that, and the third, but look what God has done for me. We can't walk around and um, have this, Oh, I've arrived mentality when God has called us to be his voice, to be his mouthpiece and to draw others in. Well, it is funny that you would say that because there are so many uh, Christians who feel like I'm on this level now. So uh, either you're going to be on the same level as I am or you're going straight to hell. I, 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 I don't understand how we can get to that point. Uh, why are we like that? Why, why are some Christians like that? I would say some Christians are like that because they get title and status confused with growth because I go to church every Sunday because I sit on the deaconess ward and I wear the white dress and the white hat and the white gloves because I'm an associate minister because I'm an usher in the church I have status you got to get to that but the truth of the matter is what's in your heart what is what's what's in your heart so what if you go to church if you got a raggedy attitude and your heart ain't right what difference does it make mm. and I think people get position in the body of Christ confused with status. Mm -hmm. I'm a servant every day, all day, whether minister is in front of my name or not. I'm a servant of God. No matter what I do. I had a, a young lady, an older lady, I call her mother. She once told me and people would say, Hey, what's your name? And I'll be like, Oh, my name is minister Brandy Smith. And one day she pulled me aside and she said, no, ma'am, your name is Brandy Smith. You just happen to be a minister. So that title doesn't become our name. It's what we're called by God to do. Mm -hmm. But we got to make sure that we're ready to accept that calling. We got to make sure that we're in that place to do just what God has called us to do. Exactly. And not for form or fashion, not to say, hey, see me on Facebook. Hey, see me on YouTube. See me on Zoom. Look what I did. Oh, I preached up something today. No, 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 no. It's not about none of that. It's, about, it's not about none of that. It's about our truthfulness and what we desire to give to God. Wow. I, and I'm glad you brought that out uh, because a lot of people will say to me, I've been in ministry for uh, going on, it'll be four years this year. Mm -hmm. um, the ministry and people say oh I got to call you minister now no that's just what God he, he he called me but you don't have to change what you you call if you always call me Johnny call me, Johnny. Call me exactly exactly it's exactly who I am I mean it, it changes what I do it changes uh, what I'm called to do now but I, I should not say that, oh, I'm a minister, so you make sure that when you call my name, you have minister in front of it. Exactly. Exactly. And people get that um, so messed up. I will never forget a time that I came across a, a local pastor here in the city, and I was at work, and he came to check on some property information. And, of course, when you're buying a house, they're not going to put minister so-and-so on the deed. But he could not understand why I was quoting his name, even though I knew who he was. He knew I knew who he was. He knew that I knew he was a man of God, that he was a pastor and he was a preacher. But I'm reading legal documents. Mm -hmm. And he flipped off. He went berserk. That is minister such and such. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm reading a legal document. And that's what the legal document says. You know, and, and again, that means that's how people just get so caught up in the title thing. Mm. It, it, titles mean nothing. Nothing. Because nothing. when we all stand before God, he's all going to give us the same name. Servant. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a servant all day long. 
Right. Whether I stand behind the pulpit or whether I'm cleaning the bathrooms at the church or whether I'm sweeping outside, picking up leaves, playing with the kids, whatever. I'm just that, a servant. Right. And, and I don't want people to get it confused. Um, we know that uh, when we have the titles like pastor and, and all that different thing, we, we know that respect is due or respect is due. But we shouldn't get so caught up. Exactly. Into those titles. Right shouldn't say just because I'm a minister, I'm on another level than you. No, I still have trials. I I still have stuff that I have to go through. I'm still a human. Exactly. And and so we just have to understand that we're all striving to get to heaven. Yes. Yes. You know, I will say, I will go and I will say this. Um, I'm reminded of the scripture that says much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. Now, this gospel that we carry, you know, God does require more. It's not the same run-of-the-mill things now, but at the same time, you have to still remain humble. Mm -hmm. Yes, God requires me to do a little bit more. I have to go the extra mile. I have to be the example. But at the same time, Humility is what makes the difference. Exactly, exactly. And so let's shift a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. Dealing with Christians who are trying to figure out, um, can I live both lives? And we've already discussed that part. But mm-hmm. when it comes to that as well, what I used to do, I used to love the party. This is what people would say. I used to love the party. But exactly. The church, I can't party no more. I can't, I can't party no more. I can't do that kind of stuff. So my question is, can a Christian still have fun? Or are we supposed to turn all, turn away from that? No, absolutely not. There's, there's many things that you can do to have fun. You just have to be creative about it. Mm-hmm. And it's just unfortunate that what the world calls fun, they think that's all there is. I have family members that think I'm the most boringest per- person in the world, whereas my Christian friends would say I'm the life of the party. I still enjoy myself. I still go out as Christians. When I say I, I mean everybody, all believers, all Christians, we still can enjoy our lives and we still can do whatever. It's just you've changed your level of fun. You've changed one one person used to say, I still dance. I just change partners. Mm. So you, you just change what, what is considered fun. I still have, you know, you still have fun. You still watch movies, still enjoy life. Right. I doesn't mean for us just because we are believers, because we are Christians. I don't think God intends for us to just live this dull, dreary life. Just because I've devoted my life to him, yes, I'm going to serve him, but that doesn't mean that I can't laugh. I got to be the fun police. <laughs> right. You know, I, I, I got to be, you know, that one that's going to just kill the party. That's where evangelism comes in at. You know, uh, you, you go into a place and people are going, oh, they go, Johnny. We got to put this away because the preacher here. Well, we can't do this because they go to preacher. Right. No, that's when Johnny steps up and, and ministers to the people and meet the people where they're at. That's when Brandy steps up and meet the people where they're at. Okay, then, yeah, I know about that. You used to do that. But let me tell you how my life is now. <laughs> let me tell you how fun. Let me tell you what happened to me when I put them joints down, when I put them cigarettes down, mm-hmm. which I never did either of the two. But I'm just saying, Let me tell you how my life has become since I've stopped doing those things Mm -hmm. and what God has done to transform my life. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons that the world can get people is because the world makes it look so good. But that doesn't mean that we can't make it look good either. Ooh! (laughs) That doesn't mean that we as believers can't show the good side. Of, of the, the right side of what it means to stay on the right side of the fence and not tip over on the wrong side. Wow. It, it's amazing because we see the world make make what they would consider fun, make it look good. So mm-hmm. why can't we make the word of God look good? Exactly. Make it look 
uh, appetizing for some. You know, when exactly. was was teaching, he would teach using parables. Right. People love stories. <laughs> you know, so so why can't we make it interesting? You know. I think we get lazy. We get lazy and we say that these people are hard headed. They don't want to listen. Why do I need to keep trying when they don't want to listen? And 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 we don't want to fight. Mm. You don't want to fight. You don't want to. You fight for everything else. But why can't we fight for the cause of God? If you come tell me that I'm that I did something wrong and I know I didn't do it, you're gonna get an argument out of me because I know I'm right. Mm. So why can't I stand for what truly is right? And that's God. Mm -hmm. Why can't I stand and, and, and be who God told me to be? Why I got to back down because you question the God in me. That's the time to stand up. And I think that's the problem with a lot of people in the body of Christ. They're scared to stand up. Oh, I don't get into that kind of argument. With, nobody told you to argue. But just know what's right. And stand up for what's right, even if you're standing by yourself. People don't want to stand by themselves. And they don't want to stand truly for God. Wow. Because they don't want to get into the, the, the great debate. Well, why you well, why why do you do what you do? Why do you walk around saying I'm a Christian? Mm. If you're a Christian, you don't have to advertise it, just live it. Ooh. A lion don't walk around saying I'm a lion. You know he's a lion by his presence. So as believers, why can't we make our presence known as to who we are and the God that we serve? Wow. And I, I think I told a story before um, about my, my class, my high school class celebrated 10 years on last year. So we had our class reunion uh-huh uh the question was was i going to go because i knew what was going to happen i knew uh, there was going to be drinking and there was going to be dancing and all that stuff going because we we did a prom 10 years later mm -hmm. made up in my mind yes i'm gonna go i'm, I'm not gonna i haven't seen some of these people in 10 years all right so i'm gonna go see my friends and and have a good time i know what i can and can't do Exactly. And they know who I am. Most of them knew that I had become a minister. They were calling me preacher back in high school. So <laughs> that, that mean that was always in you. It was just elevated when I went to the reunion. Uh, mm -hmm. but had a good time. And so that, that, that's one of the things that we have to let uh, Christians know that, yeah, you can still have a good time. You just have to know. You, if you know who you are, uh, just let your light shine. You don't have to go around with no Bible in your hand and, and dressed in all white. No, you can go and let your light shine and let people see that, hey, Christians can still have fun. We're mm -hmm. just on another level. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. And, I mean, and we have so many things in the world that, that, that are so enticing to people. And yes, it's hard. Sometimes it can be hard, but that's where you, that's when you draw your strength from God. That's when you come, that's when you tap into who you really are. God, I remember when I used to do that, but let me, let me just get before you right now. Let me get into your presence because I'm surrounded by all of these things. I'm in this world, but I'm not of it. I'm in this world, but I'm not a part of all of this. So now I need you to help me so that I won't be trying to tip back because I know you have greater for me. When we get to a place where we value what God has over our life, we begin to protect that. That means that I'm not going to let any and everybody come in to my life and shift me from where I'm going. I'm not going to allow the enemy to throw all kinds of things at me because I know who I am in Christ. I know what God has done for me in my life. So I have to protect that. Mm. So that means... Even if I have to say, okay, y'all, I don't have my fun. I'm going. Y'all going to take it, you know. I went to the class reunions. You know, I, I went to Savannah High. We do something almost every year. Mm -hmm. I go to the picnics. It, it get to be about 7.30, 8 o'clock. They say, okay, y'all, we going to meet up at such and such. I don't even know the names of the clubs. 
but we're going to meet up at this club. We're going to meet up at this place. And I'll be like, oh, okay, um, didn't y'all say y'all was going to do a Sunday service at so-and-so church? Oh, I'll see y'all Sunday. Right. Plain and simple. And it got to a point where every year we would do the, uh, do the reunions or whatever, and they wouldn't even tell me about the after parties, <laughs> which was fine. Right. The only thing that they would say is, okay, Brandy, we're going to be at uh, Pastor Horton Church right now on Skidaway. We're going to Pastor Hodge Church <laughs> in South Carolina or whatever. Right, right. So they would just let me know because they knew they got to a place where they knew what I would and would not take part in. We laughed. We had a good time. That's it. Yeah. And they drank. Okay. Right. That doesn't mean that I have to. Exactly. That doesn't mean that I'm doing it, you know, but every opportunity that I had to throw a little bit of Jesus in there, I did it without making anybody feel condemned or beat over the head. Wow. You got to give them Jesus without giving them Jesus. Slip it in there without them. Even. And before you know it, you don't you done minister to them because of how you've done it. You got to be creative. You, you got to be. We got to learn. We got to learn that creative way. Uh, and I like mm-hmm. you said that slip in Jesus without slipping in Jesus. Exactly. <laughs> that, that, that's crazy. Because if they if they just get a little piece. Exactly. Piece, you, All you need to do is drop the seeds to somebody that's going to come and do some watering and then pray for God to do that increase. Wow. <laughs> because we, a little seed. we get so ready to give them everything. Mm hmm. And we give them everything, we're going to push them away. Exactly. We're going to push them away. Exactly. We got to know how to do that thing. We got Exactly. Wow. I had a young lady on my job when she found out that I was a minister. Now, mind you, before her finding out who I was, you would tell your little, your little jokes or whatever, and I wouldn't laugh at them, but you would still tell your jokes. So then when you found out who I was... All of a sudden, everything is praise Jesus, hallelujah, thank you, God, praise Jesus. And I told her, I said, I'm still the same person I was yesterday before you found out who I was Mm -hmm. or what I do. Don't change who you are in my presence because it's me. It's not me that can change you. So, yes, if you want to talk, I'll sit down and I will talk with you. And I will help you get to wherever it is that you're trying to get to in God. But I don't want you to feel like you got to become this walking Bible in my presence. Because guess what? Sometimes I like to sit back and laugh. Mm -hmm. I like to sit back and have some fun. I like to watch stuff on TV and laugh. So my life is not 100% Bible, 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 church, church, church. I enjoy life. Thank you. Just like you enjoy life, I enjoy life. I may not do everything that you do that you consider enjoying life, but I enjoy life too. And that takes me to this last, this last question. <laughs> <laughs> How do I become a living sacrifice and not conform to this world if that is all that I see on TV and the movies and even social media? I would say, hmm. I would say first surround yourself with people, like-minded people, people that are like you, that understand um, where you're at in Christ so that you can draw strength from each other. Mm. Again, going back to some of the other things that we just previously said, um, you got to be creative. You got to be creative. I, I'm, 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 I'm a very uh, routine person. I get up every morning. I my TV's on the same station. I'm watching the same TV shows all every morning before going to work. I come home, back on the same channels, watching the same things over and over. And then I began to say, you know what, God, I gotta switch some things up. Mm-hmm. So instead of me flipping the TV to, and I like to watch old TV shows. So instead of me watching good times all day long, or all night long and give me a break and all of these old TV shows, I said, okay, what's on YouTube? Flip the YouTube, listen to Tasha Cobb, listen to uh, Sarah Jakes Roberts preach, switching it up, putting some other things in my spirit rather than watching the same stuff 
over and over again and not getting anything out of it. You see the social media stuff. You see everything on YouTube. You see the stuff on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Yeah, you see that. But when you, as what this conference is all about, when you can truly make room for, when you make room for God in your life, that stuff becomes null and void. Hmm. That stuff becomes unnecessary. You don't even think about it. Because now God is now have place in your life. Yeah. God now has first place in your life. So instead of me coming home every day, looking at my TV shows, playing games on my phones or whatever I'm doing, I'm in the word. Mm -hmm. I had to make room for him because at the end of the day, J.J. Evans and Floyd Evans and them can't get me into heaven. Right, right. You know, when guys, when I stand before God and God say, why didn't you tell my people? I can't say when I was watching Good Times, Lord. <laughs> you know, I got to be able to do what I got to do in his word and do what he called me to do. Right. And, yeah, you, you shut it down sometimes. Put the phone down. And, and, and I think that's just a trick of the enemy. The enemy has made it so that we have the world in the palm of our hands. Right. Because we got our phone in our hand and we can flip the Facebook, we can flip the Instagram, we can flip the Twitter, and everything, every time you look, something's being posted on Facebook about whatever. Whatever is going on in people's lives, boom. My, one of my good friends, she left work sick, went to the hospital. Guess how I knew she was at the hospital? Facebook. Facebook. So it has... It has consumed us, but as believers in Christ, we have to know when to set standards. We got to set our standards. We got to set boundaries, and we got to say, okay, God, I have made room for you to come in and do whatever it is that you need to do in my life. Cut the TV off. Cut the, cut, cut the phone off, whatever. Mm -hmm. Here is all the space you need in my life. And we have to be willing. You can't just say it, but you got to be willing to do it. You got to want to get that kind of stuff up. You got to want God to come in, and you got to want to make room for him. Mm. So if you don't want it, it's going to be a struggle. So the question is, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want God to come in and saturate the atmosphere? How bad do you have to be? The doors of the church are now closed for, for a season. Do you have to be in the building to give God that time? Or, it, or do you have a sanctuary? Do you make your house a sanctuary, a place of worship and a place of praise? I believe God is calling us to make room for him because of all of this. God is using this pandemic as a way for us. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. For us to make room for him. Because now I've taken away all of your distractions. I've taken away you coming to church as usual just to hear the pastor preach, the quiet on Sunday, the pastor on preach, the usher on collect the money, and you pick up and you go back home and nothing has happened. But what happens when you can't go in there? What are you going to do now? Ooh. I can't go into Second Honor. I can't go to 1427 East 37th Street right now. Right now I'm at 2220. So what am I going to do? Wow. Am I going to worship God where I'm at? It's, I believe God is saying, it's time for me. I'm coming in and I'm taking up space. I'm, I'm taking the space. Yeah. Yeah. Because now you're pushed to a place where you have to worship him without the distractions. And, and you have not worried about who watching you while you shout. And you got to do it with uh, wanting to do it, as you said. Exactly. All about what you want. It's all about in what you want. You got to want it. I thought God of, is such a gentleman. I, I thought about that thing about uh, when the church doors had to be closed, mm -hmm. and how because we we would always say there'd be some people who would say um, the church is not a building. We are the church, and you know we would preach it. We would tell people that we are the church. You, your body, your body is a temple. But I don't believe that people really understood that. They don't. Because let me tell you why they don't understand it. God, God had to do it himself. Go ahead. Because they say that we are the church. 
but then they in another breath is saying, Oh, I can't wait till things get back to normal. Mm. Do you really want it to go back to normal? Or do you want it in on, on another level? Do you want do you want do you want it different? Do you want a difference? Or do you really want to just be normal again? No, I don't know about nobody else, but I don't want to be normal. We can't. We cannot go back. And I, I've heard pastors say this. He said that we will not go back to normal. Exactly. Because there, there is no reason why all of this should, should happen to us for us to be ready to come back and do the exact same thing we were doing when it was back in, uh, what, January and February. Exactly. We worship needs to be different now. It we, needs to be. We have to be on another level because watch this. We got a, we had about, I think this is the 12th week. Yeah. That we, we had the opportunity to get closer to God. Exactly. Exactly. But I'm, I'm praying for the body of Christ. I really am because what I see is people coming back into the building with this extreme excitement and this extreme zeal because they've heard it talked about for how many ever weeks, for how many ever months to say, we're not going back to normal. We're not going back into the same way of doing things. I see people coming in with this grand excitement and then I see this excitement dying down because they're going to get excited because they think that's what they should do. Mm -hmm. But it's going to die because they did not allow God to truly transform them in the, during the time that they was away from the building. They didn't allow God to truly transform them during the time that they was home and couldn't go to work or couldn't leave the house. They didn't spend the time. They talked the talk, but did they really spend the time? Did they really stretch out before God? Did they really lay out before God? Did they really give God glory? Did they really give God praise even in the midst of what's going on? Hmm. So I'm truly praying for the body of Christ because I don't want to see everybody come in with this grand excitement and then a month later you're back talking about sister so and so. Hmm. You're back talking about deacon, deacon, whatever. You're back doing the same thing that you was doing. It should only go higher from here. It should only get better from here. Mm -hmm. So I'm praying very much for the body of Christ, praying that they don't allow the excitement to die, the zeal. That, that uh, And I'm just praying that God will rekindle some fire in some people. Mm. You know, set some things to fire. When you feel, think about how you felt when you first gave your life to Christ, mm. when God first called you and how hungry you was for his word and how hungry you was for his worship and how hungry you was for his praise. I'm praying for God to just take the, that, that fire and that hunger and just ignite it throughout the entire body of Christ. Mm. Uh, and, it, and it starts now. It starts now. It's now you, you have to get that thing. Uh, as you said, you have to want that thing. Exactly. You have to want to have that fire. You have to want us to come back and to, to not be going back to the norm. Mm -hmm. you, you have to want to come back and say, hey, God, I'm ready to commit. Exactly. And we got to be serious about it. Yeah, yeah. Not just lip service, but serious, truly serious about it. Love God enough to say, God, especially those of us who have been covered in the midst of this pandemic. Especially those who didn't lose a job. Those who still had a car to drive, still had food in the refrigerator, still was covered. Even those who didn't have that may have experienced some sort of loss, but yet God still protected and covered and provided for them. So we have to be able to look at it and say, you know what? Look what God did. I I, I gotta get I can't sit and play with this thing. This thing is serious. Mm -hmm. He didn't let anybody, he didn't let us miss a meal. He took care of my family. He took care of this person. He allowed us to still have a job. I mean, I don't know about nobody else, 
But all I could do was give him glory and thanks every day. When I think about how he protected me, how he covered me in the midst of this. So I'm saying for the sake of the conference, God, I make all room for you. Come in, sit in, do it, do it how you want to do it. And not just because of what you did for me, but simply because of who you are. Mm. Simply because you are God. Simply because you are God that will provide all things. Simply because you are the God that can heal this land. Take away this fire. Simply because I know you can do it. Even if you choose to wait two, three, four, five months later, I still know you can do it. Mm. However long you choose, I still know you can do it. Because that's the kind of faith I'm standing on, knowing that you're going to do it. Trusting and believing that you will. Wow. Wow. Listen, we, uh, I want us to continue to be prayed up for the body of Christ. I want us to continue to pray. Uh, families, I want you to pray with your, your, your loved ones. Uh, get together. Um, just because we are separated physically um, exactly. should not be separated spiritually. Exactly. And so if you, if you have to uh, have a family Bible study, you know, start, start small. And then that's mm -hmm. one of the things that I wanted us to, to really understand. Cause a lot of people think that when we say get into the word, we mean that you got to read a whole, whole book in, in one day. No, no. Take, take your time with it. Take, take one passage, uh, take one paragraph at a time. Take a few, few steps, a few steps. If you say, Lord, I want to be committed to doing this thing, um, say, give God at least, let's say you can start off with, with 15 minutes every yeah. day, 30 minutes every day. Turn off your phone, turn off the TV and say, I'm going to commit this 15 minutes. I'm going to commit it to God. The next week, say, okay, I'm going to do 15 more minutes. I'm going to do 30 minutes. Exactly. And go up from there. And this is what we're talking about when we're talking about levels. You know, take it up a notch. Yes. Until you are where you need to be spiritually with Christ. So that's what this is all about. Anything else you wanted to add with us, uh, Minister Smith? Um, no, I think I've said, <laughs> I think I've said a lot. Um, Again, I'm just so thankful. I thank you for the opportunity um, for having me. Um, as I texted you earlier, I was a bit nervous, you know, and I tell people all the time, um, I'm always nervous because the minute I stop being nervous means that I'm not relying on God. I'm, I'm, I'm standing, I'm trying to stand on my own and, and I'm nothing without him. I can't stand on my own. So I have to have him. But the more I began to talk, the better I began to feel and to be, be able to see God and see God for who he is in my life. And I'm just thankful to God that even in the midst of this pandemic, I still got up and I went to work yeah. almost every day. In the days that I didn't work, I still got paid. And I, I thank God for that. Yeah. Um, in the midst of this pandemic, I've seen people healed. Yeah. I've seen, you know, I've seen people sick. I've seen people healed. So I, I thank God for that. And all I can do is just see God in this situation. And I can see him just taking this thing and just turning it around. But I just believe that God wants his people to get it together. Mm -hmm. He's calling for us to go at a higher place in him. I just spoke with the graduates at uh, Bethlehem. And one of the things that I mentioned to them was, you know, I know people talked about 2020 vision and they said, and you, and like me, a lot of people probably thought if you got 2020 vision that you have perfect vision. Mm -hmm. But as I studied and realized, no, you don't, it's not perfect vision. It's just a standard. Ooh. It's just a basic way of seeing things. Everybody that's just, and how they base, how you see the quality of how well you can see. So now my question is, for this to happen within the year 2020, then that means that God is calling us to look be above the norm, look above the standard, look higher than where we are now. We're at, at ground level. So now it's time to set that spark and look a little higher, to go higher and continue to take it higher. 
the standard needs to be set of higher worship, mm -hmm. higher praise, giving God more glory. Are we going to just sit there and do the same old, same old? Father, I stretch my hands to thee, no other help I know. Or are we going to really go in and bombard heaven? Are we going to, and, and, and God is calling us to take this season as a time to go beyond what is normal, beyond the basic standard of living and seeing things. I want to see more of God. I want to see more of his worship. I want to see more of worshiping him, more of giving him glory, more of giving him praise. I want more of him. I can only speak for me. Uh, I want more. Mm -hmm. So God, come in, take over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, we thank you all so much for joining us in our virtual Make Room Conference. We are here until Friday. Um, tomorrow night, we will have... Uh, Jarrell Jackson and Shayla Lodeholt will be in the music room, one at 12 and one at 7. Again, Minister Smith, we thank you so much for taking the time out to do this conference, and we hope you all receive something on tonight, and we hope to see you again tomorrow night. Be blessed. God bless you. Thank you.